Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, War Games 18XX. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all since it's solo game day. Today, we are bringing y'all Ground Floor 2nd Edition, designed by David Short and published by Spielworks. Uh, yeah, really excited to bring this one to y'all. Uh, we are going to have a three-player game, me versus two Automas. So it should be a good time. But before we get started, big thank you to all the patrons who helped make all of this possible. Thank you very much for all of the support. Speaking of which, if you guys do enjoy the show today, don't forget to give it a thumb down below. Hit the subscribe button. And if you want to go one step further, you can go to pledgehc.com. If you think the content that we create here on Heavy Cardboard is worth a buck or two a month, certainly would appreciate it over on pledgehc.com. All right, ground floor second edition. So I played this last week and I got one thing wrong and it really bugged me. And so I wanted to make it right. And this game's going to be considerably harder now that I have it straight in my head. Uh, yeah, I've played this game a number of times. I've played it solo once, but um, it's going to be a tough one. If you are unfamiliar with the game, I'm going to do an overview of how you play the game. I'm going to go a little bit more in detail on how the bots will work, the automas will work. And then from there, we're going to just dig in and teach you guys how to play this as we go, since I've done an official full teach for this previously when we did a full stream of it, or multiplayer stream, I should say, uh, some number previously. Let's put it that way. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready. The question is, is Gropius and Hadid ready? That I don't know, but we're gonna kick some Automa butt today. So welcome everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact, let's get into Ground Floor, second edition, shall we? All right, in Ground Floor, one to five players, one in our case, adopts the role of entrepreneurs responsible for the survival of their young startup company. As CEO, a player will use their limited time to manage their business. Time is money, so they have to spend it wisely. Does a player need to hire staff or refine production? What about launching a marketing campaign? Anything is possible with effective time or use of time, money, and information. But in order to reach that corner office of your skyscraper, a player has to start, like everybody else, on the ground floor. The goal is to become the CEO with the most prestigious company by accruing the most prestige points through expanding and improving your business. All right, so what is it you guys are looking at out here? Well, we have the main board. The main board is broken up into a number of different buildings out here where this is going to be an action selection or worker placement uh, system or uh, the main mechanism in this game. We have a round track up there in the top left hand corner. We have the job market track down below that. We have the popularity track below that. Then I have the, if you will, the second tier buildings ready to go at the beginning of round three and the third tier uh, floors, not buildings, but floors, ready to go at the beginning of the third tier or at the beginning of round six. So those are up there as a reminder with this being a solo game. So as I said, we have a number of buildings out here which will work as worker placement spots. And then we have the economic forecast, the current economic forecast, and then the randomly generated for a uh, future forecast there. Then we have the three player tableaus there. Now, 
Within each of the player tableaus, there's a number of information that you guys need to be aware of. So taking a look here at Hadid, which is one of the Automas, we have what our specialty is for the given, uh, the given CEO or the, different, uh, the given company. These were not randomly placed. The e-commerce will automatically go to one of the bots. Then uh, Gropius actually looked like an emerging technology guy, so he got that one. And then I chose retail because I can choose mine freely. Then on the ground floor, we have various uh, worker placement spots in a sense, but only each individual player will be able to go onto their own ground floor which kind of makes sense. We have a round schedule or a round, uh, a, uh, uh, the different phases of a given round. We have some reminders over here as well as over here. And then our CEO track, which is going to determine the number of time markers that each of us gets. Now these time markers, in a sense, are our workers in this game that we're going to be using one or more of these to take given actions on a given turn. And last but not least, each of the Automas will have their own Automa deck, as you can see there. Now for me, I will have resource cubes, which the game has an uh, unlimited supply, or by the game I mean each of the Automas will. They also have an unlimited amount of information, which is another of the resources, and they have an unlimited amount of cash. Unfortunately, I do not. All right. So that's everything for the most part that you guys are looking at. We have floors that can be built over here with the construction company, as well as some tenant improvements. Then we have some additional cards that will go into the Automa deck. And then we have my markers over here out of reach a bit so that I don't accidentally grab these instead of those. All right. So what is it you're actually doing? What it, Kind of an overview here. What we're going to be doing in turn order, turn order is always going to be in popularity order. So whichever the most popular CEO is, they will go first, take one action, then the next player, then the next player. If on the same spot, it will go top to bottom. From there, they will choose one of the available spaces out here on the common board or within their own player board to be able to take a given action. And what we're going to be doing, essentially, is we're going to be accumulating information or possibly accumulating money or accumulating resource cubes or, or cubes here, goods, if you will, here in the warehouse to then ultimately be able to go to the construction company to physically build up more floors here on our buildings, which will be worth victory points at the end of the game. Now, during that, we're also going to be able to uh, get some uh, office remodels, which will be worth victory points, and possibly some tenant improvements, which will also be worth victory points. And we will go through that over the course of seven rounds, and whoever does that best between Gropius, which is the, the regular bot, the Hadid, which is the hard bot, or yours truly, which is going to be an amazing teacher and a terrible player, likely, we'll see which of us does this the best. Now, in a given round, each of the different phases, or each round, I should say, follows all of these phases. Receive income, then hire employees, then schedule business, means we will put out our workers or our time markers. Then after all of us have completed all of that, then we will conduct business. If you're familiar with a game like Dominant Species, this works similar to where we're going to place all our workers. Then we're going to actually activate all the spots in a given order, left to right, top to bottom. And then finally, a reorganize or a reset to get ready for the next round. We will do that over the course of seven rounds. Whoever does that the best will end up winning the game. All right. So that's kind of the gist of what it is that we're going to be doing. Now, that said, I will briefly go over each of the bots or automa. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. So we have Gropius, which again is the, the regular difficulty bot, if you will. His special ability, if you will, is that whenever the job market crashes all the way down to the two information and two money, 
he will then hire one more employee. And when he does so, he will then get a factory card added to their, his deck and he will get three more markers, time markers, so that he will permanently have seven time markers at that point each and every round. So that's Gropius. And he is an emergency, or I'm sorry, an emerging technology, which technically he should have an RNT marker there. So that's Gropius. Hadid starts with an extra factory card already here and an internship program, which gives her another extra time marker. So as a base of four, five for e-commerce, six. Those are her six time markers. She will never ever hire, nor will she ever get any more time markers. So her six, she will have six each and every round. Then for yours truly, I have, uh, I'm the retail CEO, and I start with an extra storage closet specialty. Each storage closet, or whenever you get a storage closet, you, it comes with an additional resource or cube here. So I actually start the game with two instead of just one. And my CEO starts at the bottom, which is, and I will show you guys this, four time markers here. So I will start the game with four time markers and just like a normal player, since I am, relatively speaking, a normal player, I will, this will determine my amount of income as well as the number of time markers. And as my CEO hires more and more employees, I will get more time markers, but I will be making less money because I have to pay my employees. All right. So, I think that's enough to go ahead and get started, and then I will go over uh, each of the actions as we get to them, whether it's for the Automa or whether it's for myself, and then we'll go through this and we'll rock and roll. So, that said, place your bets on whether you are going to choose yours truly to win, Hadid the hard bot, or Gropius the medium bot or regular bot, and over under on Glory to Realms, we're going to set this. It's seven rounds. We're going to go three and a half for number of Glory to Realms. I will bring up the chat and the camera. Hi, everybody. All right. I will bring that up here as well. All right. So without further ado, let's go over or let's go ahead and begin. So we start out at the beginning here. Receive income. All right. Easy enough. Now, one of the bots starts with uh, as the first player, and then it's random after that. I didn't. I just went left to right to be able to begin the game. So here we go. Receive income. They don't receive income. Easy enough. I do. So let's take a look here at my player board so that you guys can see this a little bit clearer. And I will... A moment. There we go. So here, you'll see that it says... $9. So I get $9 for income, but you'll notice $6, three, zero, and I actually pay three every round to be able to do so. So careful on that. But as it is, nine bucks to go ahead and start with. Now the game does come with money, but again, the money is the same color. The ones are, the, are green. The uh, three money is red and the blue fives are look just, they're the same color as the, uh, the information. So to make it a little bit easier for you guys to be able to see for the stream, I figure I would just use poker chips. So I have nine. Now keep in mind that the Automas never have information, resource cubes or, or cubes or goods. I'll use those terms interchangeably. And they never have information. So anything you see here is always going to be mine. So easy enough on that. A moment. We uh, we have some English breakfast. By the way, sad to say, oh, hold on real quick before we get started. Two things. One, finally got a haircut. Thank you, Jess. And number two, unfortunately, I reached out to Stephen Smith's Tees up in Portland for maybe to sponsor the show. And I was hoping to be able to get a lifetime supply of tea. They're a fan, but no sponsorship. Oh, well. What can you do, right? All right. If y'all are ready, I'm ready. Let's roll. Let's get into this. Seriously, my little faux hawk here. 
I'm telling you, I came chew bubble gum and whoop bot butt, and I'm all out of bubble gum. So let's get it, all right? Christo says, since Edward started doing these solo playthroughs, uh, uh, Rado does run throughs. Uh, during this pandemic, my wish list has gotten bigger and my wife's patience has gotten thinner. My bad. All right. So, we, let's get into it. We got income, right? So, now let's go ahead and we'll use Hadid's board because she's in the center here. So, let's go ahead. Next, hire employees. All right. So, let's take a look over here at the hiring employees. Take a look at up there. It's a little hard for me to reach, but we'll be okay. So if we take a look there in the job market there, you see that the marker is at the five and five, meaning it costs five money and five information to be able to hire employees. You are only limited to the number of spots that you have here on how many employees you can hire. So in my case, a total of four. Gropius will only hire, and it goes in turn order, will only hire when it's down to two and two. Well, it's at five and five, so he's not gonna hire. Then Hadid never hires, and now it's up to me. I do have five information and five money. Alas, I will choose not to hire. So therefore, we are done with the hiring step at that point. And Chad, I certainly expect some pulled pork uh, on my front doorstep by the end of the playthrough. Thank you very much. All right, so that is hiring employees. Next, we go into schedule business. Okay, well, this is easy enough. Now, again, in turn order, going left to right as it just so happens, we're going to flip over one of the Automa's cards. And if you guys can see these okay, let me know, or if you cannot, please let me know. So the first one we have here is the consulting firm. The consulting firm, and I'm going to go through this very, very slowly for the very first round, and then I'm gonna pick up the pace after that for you guys, okay? So as you can see here, we have the consulting firm. Okay, so moving over here to the consulting firm. All right, what's going to happen is we have the consulting firm over here. We're going to take one of Gropius's time markers and put it in the first available slot over here. And he would pay the $6, but again, the game has an unlimited supply. So that's moot or moo. It's a cow's opinion for friends fans out there. And Gropius's turn is done with that. Okay. All right. So now we go into Hadid's turn. So Hadid will flip over her Automa card and she will be going to the factory. Well, the factory is up here in the center. Again, we will grab one of her time markers of her six there and we will place it in the top left spot of the factory there. And you'll notice that it would cost if, you know, the Automas didn't actually had to pay it, two bucks, two information and a goods cube, okay, paid to the game. All right, so those are the first two actions and these are randomly uh, shuffled decks but they do have a preceded uh, uh, set of cards, of six cards, which are the consulting firm, the advertising agency, the warehouse, the factory, the stock exchange, the re, uh, sorry, and the construction company and Hadid has an extra factory as well. All right, so now it becomes my turn. And again, I have four uh, time markers here. So I can choose any amount of these depending on what the action is. Anything out on the main board will cost one time marker, but you'll notice that here on my player board, I could use three to get another a supply cube or another uh, resource, whatever you want to call that. However, I'm full. I have two of those, so that's not going to be an option. I could use one time marker as well as a supply cube to immediately gain three information. And I should point out that these spots on your player board on your ground floor are actually unlimited. 
I could place one to immediately go into advertising and place one in networking. I could place one for one information and training, well, only if I have hired and I would have a little untrained marker over here, but since I did not hire, I don't need to worry about that. But let's take a look out here on our various options. Well, we need to look also at what the economic forecast is going to be. This is going to be important as far as going to the factory, as far as being able to make money at the retail outlets. So we see here that it's going to be a stable economic forecast. And because we are playing a three player game, that means there will be one to three customers to be able to buy here in the retail outlets. Now, in the upcoming year, or round, if you will, the, we will have a recession, which means there will be zero to two customers. Now, how many will there be? I don't know. It's either going to, or this round, it's going to be one, two, or three, and the following round is going to be zero, one, or two. Well, what that means is going to the factory, those markers will come over here, and then we'll be able to sell for some amount of money. Well, money is going to be important. Information is going to be important. But I think what I'm going to do is set myself up well for being able to have a steady stream of information because that is one of the four resources I get in the game, money, information, cubes or goods, and time markers. So it takes money, it takes all of those things to be able to do stuff. So I need a steady supply of all of those. So I think what I'm going to do is head over to the consulting firm. So if we take a look, I'm going to use one of my markers here, come over to the consulting firm. You notice that it's going to cost me $5 to be able to place my marker there. So I will pay the five bucks to the game or back to the supply. Boom, my turn is done. All right, we are still in schedule business. How do we know? Because at least one player still has time markers. Okay, so now we're going to go back to Gropius's board. A moment. And Gropius will flip over his next Automa card and is going to go to the construction company. All right, so we're gonna take one of their markers, or one of his markers there, and we're gonna head over to the construction company. Now, since this is the first time we've seen the construction company, let's go ahead and go over this a little bit more in detail. Normally, to schedule business, to be able to go there, it will cost $4 and for information. That is really expensive. And then when we get to the conduct business or the actual activation of all of these spaces, to buy a tenant improvement will be one additional money and one additional time, or to add floors to our uh, corporate headquarters, it will cost two and two, two money and two information per floor. Well, this is going to be the first floor, so it's going to be $4 and four information on top of the four and four that we paid to schedule it. So this is where a lot of planning is going to come into place. So if you notice, I have four money and plenty of information to be able to go there. So I could go there, but I don't have the money nor the information yet to be able to build a floor. But hopefully I'm going to be able to acquire that as we go along during this round, because again, after we have scheduled all our business, we will then conduct business or activate these top to bottom, left to right, okay? So there we go. All right, so that was Gropius's turn, and now we're going to go into Hadid's second action. And Hadid, we will take, flip the next of their Automa cards, and Hadid's going to go to the stock exchange. So again, we're going to take one of her markers, and we're going to place it over here into the stock exchange. So first time for the stock exchange. Let's take a look at that one. All right. Now, unlike all the other buildings out there, we do not place this in a top to bottom up here. These will get fed later on during the conduct business step there. However, the four spaces down here, and I should point out, the actual original board 
comes with a misprint here. This arrow is actually facing the wrong direction. Instead of it going from the bottom left to the top right, I believe it goes from the top right to the bottom left. This is a paste up that you can find on BGG that literally I just glued onto the board. All right, that said, the Automa specifically, the rules say that the first chosen spot for the Automa will be the $1 location, so that is where we're going to place it, and Hadid's turn now is done. All right, okay? All right, so it's my turn. I don't have an Automa deck. I get to actually just choose what action I wish to take. Well, I am set up, not for this round, but for next round, to be able to get information. However, I am not set up to get copious amounts of money yet. So let's go ahead and remedy that. I'm going to go ahead and take one of my time markers, go here to the factory. Again, the factory here says that I will, it will cost me two money, two information, and a resource cube or a good. So that's gonna be two bucks. That's gonna be two information and one of my two storage cubes. All right, so that has allowed me to go into the factory there, all right? All right, we are now back to Gropius. Gropius, we will flip over one of his automas and he is going to the stock exchange. So again, taking one of the timers. And now I actually have to look this up what the second place is for the automa. A moment. That is done. So let's see. For scheduling, it is the one dollar and then the one in one space. So let's take a look at this. The one in one space. So you'll notice there is a one to, uh, one money and two information. There is a one and one, or one money and one information, or a one information. So the automa uh, order is that space first, and then this space next. So there we go. Boom. Done. All right. He has one time marker left, as you can see on his board. So it's now Hadid's turn. And Hadid, we will flip this over. And Hadid is going to the warehouse. So we will take one of her four remaining uh, time markers and we will come down here to the warehouse. Now we have not talked about the warehouse yet, so let's take a look here at the warehouse. The warehouse is going to be the main area in which we're going to be able to get supply cubes. So you'll notice you're always going to want to place in the lower numbered one because it's, you're going to pay either two money or one information, or as you can see, it just gets more and more expensive as these work down. Now, this is also a very, very, very important thing. You see that resource cube. Now the game doesn't care about it, the automas don't care about it. But if I were to go onto that space, I do not get that resource cube immediately. Meaning, remember when I went over here and it required me to at the factory required me to have a resource cube. I don't get that right now. I get it during the conduct business, meaning to be able to go onto the factory, I can't count on using this one until the following round. Keep that in mind, and it's really easy to trip yourself up with that. So during the conduct business step, Hadid, in theory, would get that supply cube, okay? All right, so that's Hadid's turn. It's now my turn. Well, I have two time markers. I am set up for information. I am set up, hopefully, to be able to make some money. So now what do I want to do? Now, I only have two bucks and I have five information and one supply cube. I cannot go to the construction company because it costs four and four, okay? All right, well, we could go to the stock exchange, but nah, I don't think so. So I think we start working on our popularity so that I'm not going to continue to go last. Now, to go over here into the advertising location, I have two options, okay? The first option is 
to actually go into the advertising location here, which you'll see when you schedule, costs one buck and one information, and then you put a marker up here, and then it will resolve as we go out there, all right? The other option, however, and not every spot has this additional option for you, is over here on your player board itself, which is the advertising space. This one says you can put one time marker and it immediately goes into the networking space. All right. So that's actually, it's free, free in a sense that it doesn't cost me money or information. It just costs me the time marker. Whereas here it will cost me the time marker as well as a uh, money and an information. But there are reasons it is a better benefit to go out here as opposed to doing the one that's on my player board. That is a really, really tough call. But I think I will go over here to the advertising agency. So I will go out there and as you saw, it will cost me one buck and one information. So there and there, and I am done. And to answer your question, Dimitri, uh, this is redemption week. And so redemption for me, because I made mistakes on three different streams that I wasn't really happy with, that I wanted to correct, uh, because they made significant impact on all three of the gameplays. So I wanted to do it right. So here we go. So it is Gropius's last action, because they only have one time marker left. So we flip this over, and Gropius is going to come over here to the factory. And again, the factory, that's unfortunate for me because remember, one to three, that's going to come into play as to how many of these actually get sold. <sighs> so, makes me a little bit nervous. Now, Hadid still has three time markers left. I have one. Gropius here is done, all right? And yes, Jace, that is correct. All right, so if we look here, Hadid, of course, going to the advertising agency. So, oops, going to take one of her markers, put it up there. All right. So with my last action, I have a buck and four information left. I'm not going to get any additional information right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time marker here. And instead of going out here to pay the one and one like I did, I think instead what I'm going to do is take my time marker and move it over here. And then I place one immediately into networking. All right. So this one will come from the extra supply and will go immediately into networking like so. All right. So I'm out of time markers, so essentially I'm done with scheduling business. Gropius is done scheduling business. Hadid, however, still has two time markers. So Hadid says, hey, where the problem at? I'm still playing, so okay. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it would have made it considerably harder, Dimitri. All right. So here we go. So Hadid will go to the consulting firm here. So we're going to take one of her markers, put it up there. And then the last one we will flip and go into the construction company. All right. And that will go right there. So everybody is now finished with all of their time markers. So therefore we are done scheduling business. So now we are going to the next step where the meat of the game, or half of the meat of the game, because half was the scheduling business. I would argue that's kind of three quarters of it. And then this is about 25%. Math, whatever, work with me. We're going to the conduct business, all right? So let me grab a drink. I appreciate the uh, confidence, Dimitri. Oh, you know what? My geek and son table here. Let's bust out some uh, Ronald Jenkins, shall we? It's not going to be Ronald Jenkins every stream, but you know what? Let's do it. Although it's very Pavlovian for me. Again, every time I hear this song during the drop, 
I expect to hear my voice because of the podcast, but there we go. So how's the volume? Let me know on, on y'all. So, and I feel like that might be one too loud. Let's go right there. Heavy cardboard episode. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. So let's go through this now step by step for the conducting business. All right. So here we go. Starting with going in alphabetical order. So we start with the consulting firm. Here we go. Done. That's it. That's all that happens in the first round. Okay, cool. Easy enough. So now let's move on over to the advertising agency. This one is a little bit more complex. These resolve top to bottom. So it begins with me. I have an option at this point. Okay. What this says is I can either go into networking, I can go into social media, or I can go into broadcast, depending on which I choose. Going into networking is free in a sense that I can move this marker over, and when I do so, I get one additional time marker from the supply, meaning from here, to be able to place out here, which would give me an additional one plus the one that came over here, and that is free outside of what it costs to schedule a business. Okay. The other option or the next option is to pay one and one to go into social media. You do not get the plus one disc, but it goes into social media or you can pay two and two and go into broadcasts. All right. Now, why is that going to matter? Well, I'm going to show you that here in just a moment, but as it is, I actually wanted to preserve my four information over here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to choose to spend any of this. So I'm going to go into networking, which means I'm going to grab one of the extra disks from my supply because I'm going to go into networking. So I move that over. I place one more in there. I now have a total of three. I place the one extra because of that as it shows right there. All right, done. So now the Automa will take their action. So as you can see with Hadid there, when resolving the advertising agency, turn over the next Automa card and reference the bottom left corner to see what type of marketing is done. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we need to actually now go back to Hadid's deck here and take a look and flip the next card. If we ever run out here, we just shuffle these up and then make the deck over. All right. So here we go. We're going to flip this over and it says she's going to go into social media. Okay. So that disc will go into social media like so. Okay. Done. However, now we actually need to resolve the advertising agency. Okay. So going back to the advertising agency, we resolve these top to bottom. So we have now networking. If there are three or more in a stack, for every three that is in a stack, you're going to gain one popularity. So you'll notice I have three. So if we scroll this up just a little bit right there, you'll see that I have three. So I'm going to actually move my marker plus one popularity because I had three. Then there may be a bonus popularity that can come with this. What determines that? Who had the most here in networking? Well, I did. Okay, so whoever had the most gets one bonus popularity like so. Then any discs that were used to increase your popularity, be it from this or from the bonus, then get returned back to the supply, or just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just gonna move them back onto there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So next, we go into social media, again, going top to bottom. So social media says if there were two here in, by any player, they will gain one popularity. Well, nobody has two here. Okay, then we go to the bonus. Who has the most? Well, Hadid has the most. So even though Hadid doesn't have two here, she's going to gain one popularity because of the bonus one for having the most in there. Then because 
This was used to increase popularity, be it from this or from the bonus one. This then will come off the board and come back to her supply, or again, I'm just gonna put it back onto her board since we're done with scheduling business, okay? So then, on that, going back to the advertising agency, for every one that is in here, you will gain one popularity, and then again, the bonus, but nobody had any down here, so we're now done with the advertising agency. But you notice, now, this is going to be the turn order. It will go me, then Hadid, and then Gropius. But before we get into that, we then go into building C, all right? Building C is strictly a bonus area. So in order of uh, uh, current turn order, every player will then choose one of the available actions or bonuses, okay? So a remodel here, we'll come back to the remodel. Get a supply cube for free from the supply. Not from down here on the board, but from the supply. Get to money, get to information, or get a temporary time marker for next round. So instead of the four that I had, for instance, I would get a plus one, okay? All right. I'm not gonna turn up the music, Jace, just because it'll be a little distracting to me, but as long as it's there, there we go. All right, so now going back to the, the remodel here. The remodel normally will cost three and three, okay? So we're going to look at Hadid's board here for a moment. So the remodels are basically any of these six spaces out here. They're both, normally they cost three and three and can be done in addition to a normal action. Now the bots will never do this, as a additional action. They will only do it uh, later on in the game. But I can always, as a player, do it as an additional action for three and three. And basically what they, what they are is not only are they worth victory points, but they make a more efficient action of whatever it may be, okay? So storage closet that I have actually stores two and comes with an extra cube. So that's kind of nice, right? You'll notice the assembly marker, instead of it costing three time markers to get an additional cube, it costs two, so on and so forth. So it just makes them a little bit better. Now we went ahead and put that randomly out on Hadid's board there, and there we go. At the beginning of the game, one of her uh, uh, tenant improvements. All right, so getting back to this now, for the bonus, what do I want? Because I'm first player, I get to choose, and I could make a case literally for all five of those. Now, if I don't choose them, if I don't choose remodel, the game will always choose remodel first. The other four don't matter. For the game, or for the bots, they will not use any of the four. I do have a buck, and I do have one information so you know what, just to prevent the game from doing that, even if it's not necessarily what it is that I wanted to do the most, I'm going to go ahead and do an office remodel. So coming over to my board now, all right, which of the remodels do I want? Now you can only remodel each room once and because I'm retail, I started with the additional storage closet there. And let me show you guys an example of each of them. These are limited in a sense that each player can do this once in each of them. So it doesn't matter as far as uh, like getting something first. You always have access to it. Um, again, I could make a case for every one of them. I do like that I have the storage closet already, so being able to use this to be able to get extra money and extra information is nice. However, whenever I hire employees to train them to spend less time is also really nice, and doing this before I get another employee probably makes the most sense. So you know what, let's go ahead and choose the training one but now that you guys have seen those, I'll go ahead. There we go. So I chose training now only costs one time marker 
as opposed to costing two originally. Plus, again, it's worth two points here for the end of the game. So then, honestly, at this point, the other bonuses that the game would choose doesn't matter. They never use the temp markers, <clears throat> excuse me, and they never get those things, so it really doesn't matter what I choose for those. So we're just gonna skip that, boom, done. That is done with the bonus. So now we come down to the warehouse. Activate left or right. This marker will then come back to her supply, and that cube, Again, the game would normally, you would get it into your storage closet, but because the Automa doesn't use it, we're just gonna put that back into the supply. All right, next now is the factory, okay? So the factory is going to place these out here into the retail outlets. Now, because it's the Automa, when resolving uh, when resolving the factory, if all products are guaranteed to sell, the Automa will place its one in the most lucrative in a three-player game. It is the $12 space, so those will sell. However, as you can see right here, it's only one to three. So only one of them is guaranteed to sell, and there are going to be three products total, so therefore it's not guaranteed to sell. And because it's not guaranteed to sell, we need to flip over one of Hadid's cards. Well, Hadid doesn't have any more cards, so we're going to shuffle up the deck. Shuffle up and deal, if you will. One of, oops, one of her cards, and that will dictate which section, be it the uh, high, which is up here, which is not available, so it would go here, the middle, bracket or the bottom bracket. And I will go over why we'll place in those when we get to my action. So there we go. We have done that. We then come to Hadid and going to go into the low bracket there. Okay, so Hadid is going to come and when you place into the low bracket there, Hadid always goes into the higher of the two if possible, okay? So if we take a look, that. Now it becomes my option. Again, one to three goods will sell. So guaranteed one of the three of us is going to make some amount of money. However, if it's only one or if it's only two, what dictates that? Well, popularity is going to dictate that. Who's the most popular? Yours truly, okay? However, they're done in buckets. And what I mean by that is customers want the most popular, re, uh, popular good of whatever it is, the Acme good, okay? But they're also price conscious to a point. What I mean by that is they will, the first customer, if there is a disc in here, will always buy from this bucket here first. Who will they buy from, the six or the eight? Well, they'll pay a little bit more if it's more popular. So in other words, if I were to take my marker and put it over here into the eight there, they will buy from me before they will buy from Hadid because I am more popular than Hadid, okay? Now, even if Hadid were here, they still will buy from me first because we are in the same bucket, okay? So essentially what this means is I'm guaranteed to sell since there are one to three goods that will sell there if I go to the eight. However, I could get a little bit greedy and go up to the higher bucket. And then if there are two or three goods sold, I will guarantee myself to be sold $12. If there's only one good, well, with it, they will always buy from the lower bucket first, if possible, meaning Hadid will sell that good first, okay? I didn't pay for the one and one. Thank you for the catch, one. And one, there we go. Trying not to cheat. All right. Uh, is it worth the extra four bucks? Yes. And there's a 66% chance that it's going to be two or three goods. I'm going to roll the dice because I'm guaranteed to get $9 during income. Uh, if I'm guaranteed, then I would have 17, which is a lot of money. 
is the four dollars it's diminishing returns right you know what the music's distracting me when i'm doing the solo sorry so the question now is is the four dollars worth it when i'm already making nine i think in the end game it's going to matter i'm going to try and push every small edge so i am going to choose the 12 here all right so that's my choice so now the automa will choose and again not guaranteed to sell so we will go over to gropius's deck now all right so gropius we will flip his deck oh that's not good for me that's the other thing i didn't take into consideration is this now says low so this will now go there oh i did not anticipate that i am dumb because now i only have a 33 percent chance of this good selling that was dumb don't do that glory to rome to me for being stupid and forget that there is one more automa one more player still to go Ah, all right. Grr. All right. Oh, well. So now we will go to the stock, uh, the stock exchange. The stock exchange, building F here, what these will do is these will fill going one, two, three, four, up into the stock exchange itself, meaning that will go up first, then this will go, and that will push that. Each disc can only hold one space each. Then once we have done that, we then determine, we take a look over here, and it says that it is a stable market. What that means is if it were a depression, these would then increase zero spaces. If it were a recession, it would increase one space. Stable, two spaces, and a boom, three spaces. But since it's stable, they're going to increase two spots. One, two. And then what happens is players may choose, going top to bottom, to cash out for a multiplier depending on what the current market is. If it were a boom, it would be $3.00 times whatever the number is as shown here. So if this were a boom, blue could cash this out for a total of six bucks and take their marker back. And you'll notice it goes all the way up to four. If it were to ever fall off the market up here, you immediately must cash out at a multiplier of two. But a boom is, is three, a stable is two, recession is one, and a depression is zero times those numbers there. Now, the Automa says, at the stock market, the Automa sells during boom in stable or at buyout, otherwise it stays. Well, it's at stable, and both of those are Automas. So they would cash out, in theory, $4 a piece. But again, because the game doesn't care about money, because since it has an unli implied unlimited amount, these will just come back to their boards and will clear off of there. Okay, that makes sense? Good, I'm glad. All right. All right, so now we go back to, we actually have to forecast the market. Here we go. So we're going to flip over the current market, and I do not know, it's random, I just shuffled these up. So here we go. I'm really hoping that's a three under there, or else I'm not going to be able to sell my goods. So we will flip this over, and of course, it's not a three. Consumers, in a three player, it is two. Wah, wah. So what does that mean? We come back down now here to the retail outlets. And the retail outlets, these will each satisfy a customer since there are two. So that one gets sold for eight bucks, that one gets sold for eight bucks. But again, the game doesn't care. So these will just come back onto their player boards. But this one didn't get sold. So what happens at this point? Each marker that did not sell must be dropped into one bucket lower. So it is my choice to go to the eight or the six. And again, there's no difference between the two eights or the four different sixes. So because I'm the most popular, might as well go to the eight. You may also at any time choose to liquidate 
for $3. Keep in mind though, you paid two, two, and a cube to go in there. That sucks. Had I gone down to the $8, I would have sold, one of the others wouldn't have, and they would have liquidated. The liquidation doesn't matter for the game, but I got greedy. Not really, I just, math, I, I forgot about the other player, but that $4 now means this is going to stay there, and it may not sell next round, because it's zero to two. And if it does sell, I'm still only going to get the $8 I would have gotten this round, but I'm not getting it until next round, if at all. So that sucked a lot. All right, so we're done with the retail outlets. So now, finally, we go over to uh, construction. So we head over there to the construction area and when resolving the construction company, the Automa always buys a random floor from the current stage during boom in stable. Well, we are currently in stable as we have covered and because it's a three player game or a two player game, it works the same. There is only one of the two level one floors available. So the first player here, this is uh, Gropius, will buy this floor. Would normally cost four and four, but again, the game doesn't care about this. So this is going to come over there. So let's take a look at Gropius's board a little bit. So literally, their board is going to grow higher. So they have bought a floor, and there we go. Now this automatically comes with a tenant improvement, as it says. Now there are three tenant improvements available, and there are only one of each. Now even though Hadid started with an internship program, which is one of the three, the extra one does come out, per the rules. So I need you guys to pick a number, one through three. First one to get two numbers picked, I will choose that one, and Gropius will choose it. And the reason this matters is because it's what one won't be available for me. So there we go. I've shuffled those three. And while you guys decide, gives me a chance to have a drink. Can't believe I did that. So irritated. Mm -mm. One to three, guys. Pick a number. Christos is on the ball. There we go. There we go. Number three. So the bottom one is the internship program. Now, the game never takes whatever the bonuses are on these. They're simply victory points. So that will just go over here go onto, and it looks like a cool little window there, and it's worth three additional points, so that's going to be a total of five points right there so far now for Gropius, uh, plus the two that they have, so they're at seven. Hadid is currently at three, and I'm currently at four, but it's early, so there we go. All right, so now you'll take a look here at the construction area, eventually. There we go. So there are no floors available because we are in the first round and in the first two rounds there's only one floor available and that floor is gone. Now if there were uh, additional construct or additional markers they would only buy one floor but they will buy a tenant improvement uh, for if they have multiple markers out here but as it is it's a different player. It's Hadid. So in this case uh, the only choice is the, uh, the tenant improvement. So now I need you guys to choose one or two. Pick a number, one, one or two, or top or bottom, whichever you want to. And I'm just going to continually shuffle these until you guys choose. And there will only be one level one tenant improvement left after this.
All right, two, so the bottom one, the bottom one will be human resources, which is hiring discount of three and three. Oh, that would have been nice. So Hadid will choose that one, and it does not matter which space it goes on to down here. Okay, now, every time that the Automa buys a floor or a tenant improvement, we're going to take this Automa office, and I will take, uh, I'll show you here uh, in Hadid's, and this is a deck of just Automa office cards. Okay, that's all it is, they're all the same. Going to add one to the deck each time. So each of them will get one because they each bought a floor or a tenant improvement there. Okay, so done. And the marker will come back there. All right, so we are now done with conducting business. So now we go into reorganize. Reorganize says downsize. What does that mean? If there is a CEO that wishes to drop down, they will lose the time markers, but they will gain the benefit of more income in the following round. However, well, they wasted the hiring, da 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 da, da. So, obviously the uh, automas will neither, neither of them will ever downsize. Reset time markers. This is what I screwed up in the last stream. So what does that mean? Well, Gropius has a time marker out here but Gropius qualifies for four time markers every round. So they will have, he will have four time markers. Hadid has one out here, but gets six time markers each round. So there's that. And then yours truly, I get four. So that will clear off my board and come over there. All right, done. Uh, they do use the same, not the same, to answer Christos's question, do all the bots use the same Automa cards? They, the decks are set up the same, except Hadid started with an extra factory card, and then Gropius, once they hire another, will get an extra factory card as well. And then at the beginning of round six, each of them will get an extra construction company as well. Okay, so they have their own decks, but they're the same cards. Does that make sense? I hope that answers that. So now we need to update their boards. Stock the warehouse. Okay. So the warehouse will only ever stock one good regardless of how many are empty. But since only one was taken, we restock it one. Then adjust popularity. Well, you know what? Uh, advertising is fleeting. And what have you done lately? There's a reason that McDonald's still advertises the hell out of their hamburgers. Does everybody know McDonald's exists? Yes. Is there a reason that every YouTuber in existence tells you to like and subscribe? Yes, because people get complacent and they forget. So, like and subscribe down below. In other words, this is fleeting. Each of these stacks will move back one space like so. If there were multiple in the same stack, they would move back together, remaining uh, or keeping relative position in that. But again, I will still go first, then Hadid, and then Gropius because it goes top to bottom when tied. So that is adjusting popularity. Assessing the job market. Okay, what does that mean? Well, this is where the economic forecast also is tied into the job market. So the job market started the game at five and five, and every time an employee is hired, it will increase one spot. But because nobody was hired, it did not increase a spot. But if we look here, unemployed. In a three-player game, there are two unemployed. So what does that mean? So we come over here onto the round track area, all right? We take a look, and there were two there, so that means this will drop down one, two spaces. So now hiring is going to be four and four, respectively. All right. Hopefully that makes sense as well. Okay. So that is assessing the job market. And now we have to forecast the economy. What does that mean? All right. Well, that is out of the game. The stable one, I'm just going to put it over here to remind me round one is now essentially done. So then the next round is going to be a recession. Then we know the following round, it's going to go back into stable. All right. So that is the end of the first round of seven.
I hope all that makes sense and you guys were able to follow along pretty smoothly. If you guys have any questions on the mechanism so far, you have seen most of the game at this point. You've not seen the results of the consulting firm yet. But outside of that, you guys have pretty much seen everything. Now, I'm still going to walk you guys through each of the steps, but I'm not going to go through it in such detail going forward unless you guys have specific questions to be able to pick up the pace so you guys can see how a game will normally play. And hopefully I don't move at such a speed that I forget steps. And that's where hopefully the peanut gallery will help me out. So we are moving into round two. So that will go there. And now we begin. So here we go. Receive income. Well, the game doesn't receive it. I do. So I get, I'm still there. I get nine bucks. All right, cool. Then the next step is hire employees. And we do this in popularity order. Do I wish to hire an employee? Yes, I do wish to. Alas, it's four and four. I only have three information. I'm not hiring. Then Hadid never hires and Gropius will only hire when it's at two and two. So we are done hiring. Schedule business. All right. Now, before we go any further, every round, the game or the Automas will start with a shuffled deck of their Automa cards. Okay. Hey, Boogie. And welcome everybody that I may have missed that came in while I was, uh, walking through this in extreme detail. Hopefully that worked for you guys and hopefully that was clear. All right. And Hadid, we will cut. There we go. So one other, I mean, yes, I have the lights and everything, which is real cool and the speakers and stuff on the table. But the thing that I really, really like about this, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. I'm just going to show you guys this real quick. Just Plus, it lets me slow down just a hair. Is You see these? These actually fold out and turn into an extension to where it holds full sizes of paper. Like, I have essentially a little table now. It's built in. There are six of them around the table here. So each of these. But I'm not doing it because I need to be able to reach further. So mine is uh, rolled up here. Whereas this one, I don't need to roll to move that far to the left. So I have that down. I have the PTZ controller. I have the camera controller down here to where now it's just nice and clean up here. And you guys, I like this. I'm a big fan. So anyway, just thought I'd share. So really impressed with this table from Geek and Son. It is taller though. And the, and the, the, the actual uh, play space is smaller, but I can always put the inserts on to make it a full size, even bigger than my previous table. But the biggest uh, adaptation I'm having to do is it's physically like four inches taller. And so it's just, it's, it's taking an adjustment. Um, oh, 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 one more thing. Hold on. There are cup holders and everything, but again, because I'm moving around so much, I just keep it down on my table down below. One other really cool thing, all of these open up and there's, I mean, ow. and there's storage areas. There's this on the other side and in both corner, all four corners, the corner ones, so that I can put all my dishes and it's pretty awesome. I'm just a really big fan so far. Although the height of the table is the one thing that I need to be cognizant of. All right. So. Yeah, seriously, um, honestly, if it were lower, that would have made it perfect, in my opinion. So anyway, all right. All right, so we are done with uh, hiring, so we're in the schedule business. They have shuffled their decks, and now it's my turn. So we have nine bucks and three time. I'm not going to go through and zoom in on all of their stuff this round, but if you need me to, and if I go too quick, please tell me, all right? All right, so what do we need? Uh, I definitely need information. I'm going to be getting 10 information. I do not have information right now, and I really need information. Although there's no floors available until that stack of floors comes out in the second group, which is in round three. So getting over here into the construction company doesn't matter so much for me this round. 
this round, but I think it does for next round. So what do I need? I need money. Well, I'm going to get income here. I'm going to hopefully get eight bucks out of this here. I'm going to get information there, but I want to keep a steady stream of these things going. <sighs> Honestly, I think the three places that are going to be a priority for me are coming here to the warehouse where it's only one information, getting to the factory is not going to be as important this round. Mm. So maybe, nah, but it's cheap. I'm definitely going to want to go to the consulting firm. That I know. But in a perfect world, I would be able to go to the second spot because it's going to be cheaper. I do not have to back up my own. I, whatever one, as long as it is backed up, that player will get the information. Oh, what's important to me? I think being able to get a cheap good even though I don't need it right now, keeping a steady stream of those going, I think is going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my time markers. I'm going to go into the warehouse. I'm going to spend one of my three time. Get my two change and done. So then we go into Hadid's turn. Hadid will go to the stock exchange. Again, we know the order of that now. We go there, done. We go to Gropius, who will also go to the stock exchange. And again, we know the order of that, done. Back to me. Well, I was hoping one of them would go to the consulting firm. Well, here's a thought. What if we went to the factory? And what if there are multiple sold? Huh, one thing I need to look up. Will it always sell? I think it's one per player, but let me double check first. Hold on. No, it is not one per player. Huh. So the question is, if it does happen, but then it liquidates if I don't, right? If I have it down there in the bracket. Nope, we're not going to go to the factory this round. I feel pretty good about that. So you know what? I will spend the extra buck because I... Odds are I'm going to get some amount of money for this. So I'm going to spend the six bucks and bite the bullet. And I'm going to spend a time marker to go over to the consulting firm there. All right. Hadid's turn. Hadid. So this is the first time that we've seen this. So let's go ahead and show you guys this. The Automa office. Now, this is the first time. This is the card that we got from her buying the tenant improvement or a floor automatically gets an Automa office here. So the Automa office, if the Automa reveals an Automa office card on its turn, simply put one anywhere, one time marker on its player board. It doesn't matter where it goes. It basically just is wasting one of these on um, one of these spaces out here, but because they don't do whatever it says, it's just going to go over here and done. All right, done. So it basically wastes or, or spends one uh, superfluously as far as the game is concerned, which that's good for those who voted for me. All right. The consulting firm. Awesome. That's good news for me. That guarantees I will get 10 information. Awesome. Back to my turn. I could go again out there for four bucks. Problem is I have three bucks. And last I checked, three bucks is not four. That would have been the reason to wait to go there. Then I could have maybe gotten both of those. Damn it. Ah, so what do we do? Hmm. 
What do we do here? I mean, I'm looking at my player board here. You know what? When in doubt, advertise. One, two, three, two bumps, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of my markers, put it over here into the advertising agency that's going to cost me one and one. Done, Hadid's turn. She will go to Le Factory. There, done. And now Gropius will go to the warehouse. Good thing I went when I did so that I didn't have to pay the extra money. That's awesome. No, it is not, Christos. So now, you know what? I think with my last time marker, I'm actually going to go here into advertising, which then allows me to place one immediately into networking. I could use the one that's here, grab an extra, whatever, it doesn't matter, because I'm out of time markers, that's it. Hadid has three left. Hadid's going into advertising. Gropius. Automa office. And what did we say? We said this will come over into the board. He's done. I'm done. Hadid is not. Hadid has two markers left. Consulting firm. And then the factory. Wow. Okay, done. So everybody is out of time markers. So now we then go into conduct business, okay? Yeah, I agree, Kevin. I think keeping my popularity lead is going to be important on this. So now this is the first time that we've actually seen what the consulting firm actually does, which this is the whole reason we wasted that action last turn. These resolve top to bottom. So, because blue is backed up, in other words, there is another disc, it doesn't matter whether it's their own or another player's behind it. As long as they have one that pushes it, as it gets pushed out the door, they get 10 information. But again, because the game doesn't care, this will just come back onto their time board, or onto their board. Then, because I'm backed up, I'm going to get 10 information. It's always 10 information. So those will come over. These will come back onto our respective boards. And unlike the Automas who don't care, I damn sure do. So I'm going to get, that's eight. That'll be 10 information. Ah, information is power, right? So there we go, awesome. And now they're set up for next round as well. So now that you've seen how the, uh, how the consulting firm works, we can move on. The advertising agency, I have a choice. I have money and I have information. I could choose to go to any of these, but I don't know where Hadid is going to go. So I think what I'm going to do is guarantee myself a double bump. So I will just go straight into network. It is possible I could get a triple bump if I went to one of the others, but it's a guessing game and I really don't wanna do that. Because I went into networking, I get another one from the de from there, boom, done. So now, Hadid, we're going to flip her deck, and this is going to go into broadcast. Okay, well, that's not ideal. That will come down here. So again, now we go top to bottom. I have three plus the bonus, because I have the most, I'm going to go up two. Then all of these will come back and we'll just go and throw them onto my board. Then, nothing, and then here, broadcast. For every one, going to get one bump, and the most popular. So Hadid actually gets one bump for having one, and then for having the most, gets an additional bump. Boo. I'm still the most popular, but I was hoping to have a bigger lead in popularity. That kind of sucked. But, I still have the lead, which means when it comes to the bonus, what do we want now? I don't know. Another remodel. I mean, we have two bucks 
and 11 information. So the remodel is kind of nice. And I'm looking at the available. <sighs> Free supply cubes, really nice. Money is tight right now, but re remember, hopefully, I'm going to be able to sell this for eight bucks. I'm definitely going to sell it for three, hopefully for eight, and I'm going to get nine bucks next round. So I think the remodel, get the, get the cheap points while I can, I think, I think is what we're going to do. And again, it's keeping the game from getting those points, right? So I will go ahead and remodel for one and one. So which one, that I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So the one and one, I did remember to pay for it this time. So here are our four options. There, there. I am probably going to be hiring this round. So having the extra time markers to go into social media might not be terrible. But being able to get extra money in a pinch is really nice with the extra cubes. And I'm going to have another cube. So I think we go with research and testing, which will get us money in a pinch if we need. This is the only way we can get money in a given round if we're not going to choose the money on the bonus action. Okay? Uh, I mean, everything is good, right? So yeah, I think, I think we'll do that, but I don't feel like, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what we're going to do. And again, in a three-player game, the third-place player does not get a bonus. So technically, this would go to one of them, and it doesn't matter. So that clears off. There. Done. So now we go into the warehouse. This one, I get one of those. The game would get another, but we're just going to put it back into the supply. And markers come back onto the boards. Mine will just go there, because I already have four. Okay. Yeah, the advertising makes sense, but I, I'm worried about money, uh, honestly, especially if this doesn't pan out. And because we're in a recession, I, yeah. So I can make a case for it, Christos, but that's what we went with. So there we go. All right. So we're done with the bonus. Now we go in the warehouse. Now we go into the factory. It is not guaranteed to sell. So it's going to be two in a row for Hadid. So Hadid, we're going to flip over two cards. One is going to go into the high market. So that one will go into the 12 spot and then we have to shuffle. So outside of the playthroughs, be it last week's uh, one where I made a mistake or two or this one, have, how many of you guys have never heard of Ground Floor until those, until I started streaming these essentially? And Hadid will cut. There we go. And now for the second one, also going to the high marker, which really kind of sucks, honestly. We'll go there. All right. That's E. Now the stock exchange. That will go. That will go. We are in a recession, so it will get one bump each. And to be clear, the stock exchange, they only cash out when it's boom or stable, meaning they will stay. So we're done with the stock market. All right, so we're gonna go with the economic forecast. Hope it's at least one. It's zero to two, come on, at least one. Oh, thank God. All right, consumers, one. All right, phew. Always starts with the bottom bucket, so it's going to be mine. That's going to sell for eight bucks. Whew. That would have been really, really, really bad. That would have been hard to come back from, I think. There's my eight bucks, nice. Then each of these must drop a bucket. They do, done. So then construction company, there is nothing. So we are done with that. So we're done now with conducting business, okay? So downsize, nobody's hired. Reset the time markers, okay. So this one will come back off their board. That's three, there's one out there, there's one out there. So we need to add another so that Gropius has 
his starting four. Then here, Hadid, this one will come back, so they're at three, four, five, six, seven. All those are out there, so we need to add three more for Hadid. This is gross. So I'm just cluttering her board a little bit, but that's all right, because she never hired, so it doesn't matter. And I have my four, so we're done. Update the boards, stock the warehouse, okay. There are two spots, but again, only one gets filled every round. Adjust popularity. Well, again, it wanes, so that drops one, that drops one, done. Assess the job market, okay. So let's take a look again at the economic forecast. And did anybody memorize what that said? The economic forecast says unemployment is two, as shown right there. So we're going to drop it two. That will move over and drop two. Now hiring is three and three. Oh, now it's awfully tempting, isn't it? Hmm. All right. A moment, grab something to drink. English breakfast is done. You know what that means, right? By the way, the, the official name from the uh, Smith Tea Company in, uh, in Portland for this tea, my favorite tea in the world, it is Rose City Genmaicha, or Genmaicha, yeah. Um, it's so good. Oh, that's good. Mm. All right. Uh, forecast the economy is the next step. So this one, the recession. We're out of a recession. Yay, round two's done. We're going into a stable market. And then, hey, a boom. Hey, we finally get to see one. So stable says one to three will sell. A boom says three or four will sell. So awesome. Nice. So we go into a new round. All right, a few things are going to happen. We're going into round three. We're going to grab those. So we go into round three. So all of these. So these are the tenant improvements. Three more of those come out. Uh, plus $2 per product sold. So plus two on those. Do not drop at retail outlets, meaning even if it doesn't sell, it can stay up there or it can drop your choice. And PR firm does not drop in popularity. Meaning, you know how it regresses? No, it doesn't, because you hired a PR firm. So all of those are now available, and all of these floors. There are 10 different rule breaker floors, okay? So, let's go over what these are briefly and quickly. And actually, I will do this with uh, Hadid's. All right. So here we go, here are the floors. And you know it's during the second segment because it has that. They're all going to be worth five points. The assembly line, place one marker and get a supply cube. You can do that up to twice in a given round. The construction admin, still my favorite floor. Place three time markers and go into construction. You can do that up to three times in a given round. Remember, it costs four and four to go there. Now it just costs three time. That's real nice. And you can use one of the three time markers to put it into the construction company. Investor, you just get plus three bucks every income. The telecommunication, place a time marker up to three times and get three information each time. Conference room, do it twice is twice as good as the telecommunication, but not quite because you can only do it twice, but you get five information instead of, so yeah. IT department, you get four information on income. Normally you get zero information on income. The marketing department, place two markers and one of them will go into broadcast. You can do that up to twice. Nice. The online store, this is expensive. Three time markers and a cube and you just get six bucks. You can do that up to twice per turn. The research lab, a cube and a time, you get three and three. You can do that up to three times. And the in-house factory, two time markers and a cube, place a, a time marker out on the factory itself instead of having to play, pay two, two and a cube. Now you just pay two time in a cube. So you don't pay the two time 
I'm sorry, the uh, two money and the two information. So all of those are available. And again, there's only one of each in a two or three player game. So I'm just going to place these up there, take my word for it. And so I don't forget to do this. I'm going to set these actually on top of those since it's a solo game, so I don't forget. All right, all right. So it's a new round. So receive income. I'm the only one that does that. I get nine bucks. So I'm gonna turn in one and get a 10. Dimitri says he's not a big fan of the construction admin. I go for income floors first. Oh, fair enough. We all have our, uh, all have our favorites. All right. Hi, Stacy. welcome. All right, so that's income. Hire employees at three and three, okay. So I'm gonna spend three time, sorry, three information and three bucks. So I'm gonna hire. So what does that look like? Well, there are some hiring markers here. And here's what's going to happen. My CEO is going to come up here. So next income, I'm only going to, for now on, get six bucks. I'm going to place this little I don't get those time markers yet because they are untrained workers. They're in theory, they're in training. So I'm going to set one of these aside. So I remember to train because it really sucks if you don't remember because then you don't get your time markers next turn. So this one's for training. So I don't forget. So next turn and on subsequent turns, I will get three additional time markers. That's nice. All right. But in addition to that, because I hired, it is now one less on unemployment. So then we go into the second player. Hadid never hires. Gropius, it's not at two and two. It's still at three and three, but it's one space further. So Gropius does not hire. We are done with hiring. Schedule business, same order, going right to left. Let's rock and roll. So what are we doing here? We got 15 bucks and seven information. Well, we know it's going to cost us eight information and eight bucks to be able to go to the construction company, but we're gonna to go to the construction company. So it costs four and four right now. So five bucks, get one back, and five info, and one back. Done. So now, Automa. Now we do have to shuffle their decks again, okay? Not, not gonna cut Hadid's this time, but we will on Gropius's. So are you guys, uh, uh, Comcast, sorry, Brendan. You guys following along, it all makes sense. You guys able to make heads or tails of what's going on in this, oops. All right, so we will cut, there we go. All right, Hadid's turn. Hadid goes to the advertising agency. She's tired of going second, apparently. All right, Gropius, construction company. Good thing I went when I did. My turn, I don't know. Oh, so one to three are going to sell. I don't know if it's worth going to the factory right now because I assume at least one, if not both of them are going to go. And it's just unlikely that I'm going to be able to sell this round. I'm definitely going to have to spend some amount of money over here to back up, to keep my information churning, but I'm gonna be real tight on money. So I have two money that I can get here. I have potentially another $2 that I can get here. So there's four, which is the four bucks I need to do this. And I'm going to have the information that I'm going to get there. So I'm going to be able to build my floor. I know that. As long as maybe I use one of these time markers or I save two bucks, all right? Advertise, I do want to advertise, there's no doubt. Um, with stable, I'm looking here at the order for the stock market. 
So it goes one, two, three, four. Mm, man. This is really a hard decision. Hmm. In a, in a perfect world, actually, going to the construction company again to be able to get to where I don't drop in popularity would be really, really nice. Um, so that would cost me a total of five and five. One information short, but I could do it. One there, one there, but then I wouldn't be going there to keep my information going. So no. Um, I think I think it's worth it to me to get the extra bump. I'm going to spend the one and one to go into the stock exchange. So I go here because that will go, the game will go there first and it will give me an extra push up there to get ready for the boom there. I think that makes sense. So I will take one of my markers and I will go to that location there. Done. Hadid will go to the factory. She has two factory cards, so it kind of makes sense, right? And... Gropius will go to the factory. Oh, I hope they go to the low so that those liquid liquidate for next round. I'm really hoping. So I'm going to stall right now, okay? Because I don't want to spend the extra six bu or the extra buck to go here because it's six bucks versus five. I'm going to stall a little bit. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take my marker and come over here to train. When I train, I take that marker off, and now that's a reminder that I'm going to get the extra time markers over here. Okay? So, therefore, I stall, meaning I hope that one of them, if not both, go to the consulting firm this turn so that I can save the dollar to be able to go there. Okay? So here we go. Warehouse. That didn't work out. So there's nothing here, so we go there and come on, consulting firm. Advertising agency. So that worked out perfect. Not. Now, Gropius has four cards and one disc. So there's a 25% chance that it's a consulting firm. Hadid has three and has five cards. So there's a 60% chance that she will go to the consulting firm. I am not willing to run that risk. Plus, to be able to have another one to continue that churn here, six, four, and I have enough for my floor, I will go ahead and bite the bullet and pay the six bucks to go there. So at least there's that. All right, so I'm done. So now, the stock exchange, we'll go to that first spot. Gropius, Automa office. So that will just go there and Gropius is done. I'm out of time markers as well. So Hadid, two actions left. The consulting firm, eh, it's okay. I was willing to, you know, I didn't want to take the risk. And the last action is the Automa office. Done. That actually didn't play out too poorly. In a perfect world, um, let me see, it would have been the one and two. Actually, I didn't want uh, Gropius to come here because they would have gone ahead of me there. So this actually, I'm okay with that. I guess it really didn't matter, did it? No, but it's moot. All right, we are now doing going into conduct business. So this disc, so hold on first, that will slide, I will get 10 information. So we'll just go ahead and do like so. Done. 
Gropius would get 10 information. This one, however, was not backed up. So no information and it comes off the board. So that's the importance of having it backed off it, or backed up. It doesn't stay there. It just, you lose it. You wasted it. You wasted that money and you didn't get the information you were planning on probably anticipating getting. Oops. All right. So now uh, Hadid is going to advertise. And where is she going to advertise? She's going to advertise in broadcast. Uh, come on, man. Really? Seriously? Can you stop that? And then Gropius is going to advertise. And Gropius is going to advertise in networking. There you go. Right there. Okay. All right. So these resolve top to bottom. Doesn't have three, but gets the bonus. So that will go on top. So now Gropius is second until we get to broadcast. There's one. So Hadid's going to get a plus one and then a bonus for having one more. That's going to now come back because that was used. So now Hadid is going to get a remodel. Okay. So which remodel? It does not matter. It just can only be one that isn't taken on her board. So there we go. She gets two points for that. Okay. So now for the bonus. What do we choose? Money's tight, right? Supply cubes. I have two, so I don't need those. In fact, I can't take those. Uh, the information, I have 12, I'm doing okay on info. So honestly, it's either the money or the temp um, worker, the temp time. But honestly, let's, let's be honest, we know it's going to be the money, right? So I will take the two bucks. There. And Gropius doesn't get any. So those will come back. There. Done. All right. So now, the factory, not guaranteed to sell, so therefore, Hadid, <coughs> Hadid, will figure out where she's going to place hers. It's going to go into the low bucket. That's really good news. I'm really happy about this. Okay? And then, Gropius will come over, and we're hoping for low as well. All right? And going to the high bucket. Not the end of the world. That's okay. At least one of them went to the low bucket. All right. So the stock exchange. This will fill in. And then this will come up. And every, it will push everything up one space. I know. I forgot the warehouse again. I know. I know. I do it at almost every time. There we go. That happens. And now, because we're in a stable market, everything bumps two spots. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, done. Then, because the game liquidates or cashes out in a stable market, this will come off and these will come off. I could, and that would be two times two for four bucks, or I could wait and a boom, one, two, three, and it'll be worth nine bucks. I think we'll wait till next turn. I'm good with that. All right. Excellent. All right. So now we need to forecast the economy. So let's see. Um, honestly, I don't care. Yeah, it, I don't think it has any impact on anything. Only one would sell. Okay. So it will, from this bucket, so technically, I'll do this how it would work if these were real players. That, so Hadid would get eight bucks, already has her six timer, so it's going, or uh, time marker, so going back into the supply. Then both of these must liquidate for three bucks a piece, so would have gotten a total of 14 bucks for the six, six, and three cubes that she invested. Then, because this didn't sell, this will drop to that bucket. Nice. 
that actually worked out really, really well. All right, cool. All right, so now we go into the construction company. I'm going to buy a floor. A floor, because it is the first floor. Uh, you know what? I, I get this wrong every time. Let me just make sure I'm not... I believe it's four and four, right? Yeah, because technically this is the second floor. It's not the first floor. The first floor is the ground floor. So it's the second floor. So it's two and two plus two and two or four and four for a base. So I'm going to spend the four bucks. I'm going to spend the four information. And now we have to choose which floor. And this is going to go there so I don't forget the Automa office because he's going to grab a floor as well. All right, don't want the factory, research lab is possible, the online store is just too expensive, Brock, no, IT department to get four information every turn is nice, the conference room to get five information is nice, the extra three income is going to be nice. Ugh. So I eliminated half the floors, all right? So those four, hey Luke, Australia in the house. So I, I limited, or I, I, I dropped it, or I, I narrowed it down to half the floors. So here are the five that I'm going to debate between. There we go. So the assembly line gets me free cubes. I don't think I'm going to do that. Not free, but cost one time. The extra income every round is really nice just to get it. The construction company, again, I've already made my affinity for that floor. All right. Um, or the research lab. All right. The investor's not bad. The research lab require for three information I have to pay essentially a time it's not worth it so I think I do something crazy you know what I hear you Christo saying to get the investor but a moment this round there's going to be three or four goods sold what's to say I can't go to the factory twice I have two cubes I'm going to get money I don't think so. I think I can go to the retail outlets twice this round. I'm going to go with my gut on this. And you guys can tell me I told you so later. I'm going to show you how good this can be. Let me see. One, two. Let me, let me double check. Hold on. One, two, three, six, and I have one extra marker. Oh. And I do, you're right, I do need money to be able to get information for next round. That's a fair point. Damn it. Fine. I did. Ah. Fine. I will take the investor. I still think the construction company is the right one. All right. I need you guys to pick a number one through nine. All right. Those are shuffled up. So that's going to be the floor that Gropius is going to choose. Okay, more T while you guys choose a number. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle these here while you guys are doing that as well. Hey Vincent, Nico, Chad, how's the pulled pork coming? And she will cut this round. Just randomly deciding here. 
And I already gave the Automa office that will come for that on this. Looks like seven it's going to be per Tim and Ken. All right, seven it is, so a moment. Just saving some time here. So seven is going, uh, actually it was, yeah, one through nine. Three, four, five, six, and seven, telecommunications. So the place one cube, I'm um, sorry, place one time and get three information. Another five points there for Gropius. All right, here we go. Good, and glad you, glad you guys are enjoying this, or at least, at least Ken is. Um, and it seems you guys gave it thumbs, so continue giving it thumbs if you haven't. All right, so we are now, that is done, that is done. I remembered the Automa office. And I do want to point out, does not get a floor for free at tenant improvement. Only do that with the level one that has the empty two windows. Okay. So this will, this will go back there. All right. So now we go back through the, uh, the end of the round. Oh, Seriously, Chad, I, I expect some pulled pork when, when I get off of here. Seriously, it's, yeah. All right, so downsize. Uh, no, thank you. Reset the time markers. Okay, so four for Gropius, six for Hadid, and now yours truly will have seven because my CEO is up here. So that is three of them, and we will grab four more. Nice, tasty. All right, now stock the warehouse. We will put one cube out there, done. Adjust popularity. Okay, everybody drops. One, 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 okay. Assess the job market. Anybody memorize it? Up here at the economic forecasts. Going to be two of them. So two. Oh. Well, this is going to be a really interesting decision now, here, momentarily. Because two drops that to two and two. Hmm. Okay. So I'm already thinking, am I going to hire? I don't know yet. And then we're going to forecast the economy. And we're done with the round. So... That is round three in the books. And boom! And then straight into a depression. Get money while the getting's good. So we're into round four. I've already shuffled their decks. Receive income. Boom. I get six bucks. Plus an extra three bucks. That's going to be nine bucks. So one. And there's that. All right. Now, hire employees. This is important why this happens in turn order, okay? Hadid never hires. Now it becomes, goes to me. Two and two is awfully tempting. And it keeps Gropius from hiring. Yeah, let's do it. So I will, so that's gonna be two and two. So we're going to get our little marker there. Our CEO, will, now income will only be six bucks, but now all of a sudden, kind of glad I listened to you guys. Good call. And because I hired, that bumps up to three and three, which means Gropius will not hire. But we're not done. Why? Because now we start over in the same order. Hadi, do you want to hire? I'm sure she would love to, but she's not. Do I want to hire? Huh. So this is kind of interesting. Time is money, right? Do I want to hire at three and three? I mean, I'm not gonna, but I could. Just saying, and that would give me six extra time markers next turn, provided I train twice. All right. And that's a fair point, Boogie asked. The depression is going to tank that 
to where I'm probably going to be able to hire then next turn at two and two if I want. So maybe we wait on that. So good call there. I was going to wait anyways, but I'm just saying I could hire again if I so desired, but I'm not going to three and three. We're done hiring schedule business. So we go first, second, third in that order. Here we go. Hadid advertising really, really doesn't want to not go first anymore. So my turn, uh, we're going to the factory first and foremost. So we're going to go two, two, and one. So two, two, and a cube. Go into the factory. Done. Now, Gropius, go into the factory. Three or four will get sold. So far, all three of those will automatically get sold. All right. So back to Hadid, stock exchange, we'll go there, back to me. I may end up going back to the factory with one of these, I may. Oh boy. So here's the other. Uh, kind of rub right now. I also want to go to the construction company. Take care, Christos. Hey, Jess. I want to go to the construction company. That's four and four. I have four information. Four leaves me three bucks. Oh, boy. So basically what this means is if I go to the construction company, it's going to cost me six and six. I'm going to get money here. I'm going to, in theory, get information there. But if I go to the construction company, I can't go to the consulting firm and I won't be able to go to the factory because I won't have the information. Or... I will because I'll be able to go to there, but I won't have the cube. Mm. Oh, man, those five points plus the special ability of whatever the floor. Oh, my God. I have no idea. So I'm probably going to do something that stalls right now. Thank you. I do need to remember to train. As I said, I'm going to stall right now. So I will train. Thank you. Because <laughs> I didn't set that one aside. Thank you, Krasimir. All right. So I went. So now we're up to Gropius. Hey, consulting firm. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That guarantees my 10 information. Now, Hadid, construction company. Well, I'm guaranteed my 10 information, but if I don't go over there, I won't get the information. But I'm going to have plenty of money right at the end. Five bucks... So because, because I have the stock market, maybe I only worry about going to the factory once. So if that's the case, then I can use this cube to go down to research and testing, which will get me a floor. I can go to the construction company and the consulting firm there. So I know I'm going to need to do that. So I'm going to spend the five bucks. Come over to the consulting firm because I'm going to need resources because it's going to be crappy next round. We know that. So I'm done. Gropius's turn. Stock exchange. We know that's the second spot. 
So we then go Hadid, factory, stop that. Now I have a decision on that. That's all four goods that might be sold. Three of them for sure. Okay, so we have four time markers left. I have two money and four information. I think I'm going to spend one time and my cube to go there, which will give me two money and two information to give me a little bit of flexibility now. Now I have choices because now I could go to a third one there as well. All right, so that was me. Yeah. Gropius, advertising for his last action. He's done. Hadid will Automa Office. That goes there. And now it's back to me. So another thing to think about is as it sits right now, I could go to the warehouse this round. However, I'm probably not going to sell next round because the depression that's coming. And I might be able to get a cube here for free if I wanted to, right? So I have three markers left. I could make a case to go to the construction company to get a floor or to go there with my last four bucks because again, I know I'm going to be able to sell that. And that's going to be worth uh, three bumps, nine bucks for sure. So I'll have money to be able to buy floors next round or this round potentially. Um, I do have flexibility here with money and time, I'm sorry, money and information to go here. But if I do that, that means I cannot go to the consulting firm. Here's something else to think about. If I went to the consulting firm with my last $4, I then could use my last two markers to go on to networking here, which would put them up here, which would give me two. The reason I think that matters is if either or both of them come into networking as well, no one's going to have three and no one's going to get the bonus means we're going to stay in same order, which means I'm not going to go worse than second which means I will guarantee myself a bonus. Not necessarily, because if blue goes to either of those, then, then they would get the one, but ah. But if neither of them go into networking, then I would get the bonus as well. Ah. Woo. But being able to have 20 information next round, I would be pretty close to set the rest of the game. But if I don't do that, I then could go into advertising, go here, and then see what they do and go after them. Oh, it's so gross. The other last thing, if I go to the consulting firm and I end up somehow first in popularity, if I don't go there, then I will have the money to do a remodel. 
All right, I talked myself into it. So that's going to be a buck in one information. And I'll go there. Done. So now uh, Gropius is out, so Hadid will go and is going to the warehouse. That's unfortunate. I was hoping she wouldn't. Okay, so we have two markers left. Um, you know what? Let's do it again. One and one. Again, I have flexibility now. So now, what, do I, what are my options here with my last cube? Last time. I could just get one information. I could go straight into networking, which is just potentially a plus one bump. Or if I put one of those over there, it guarantees me two bumps. So that's probably what we end up doing. But let's look at our other options. I only have two bucks, can't go to the consulting firm. I could go here, again, a one-on-one, -on -one, but honestly, just putting it up here straight for free makes more sense to me. I could go here for the three information. That's too expensive. I can't go to the factory because I don't have the cube. I could go here, but because of the depression, that doesn't make sense. And I can't go to the construction company, so yeah, we're going to bring it over here to advertising and this will immediately go out into networking. Okay, done. So that is all of scheduling business. And I'm just going to throw this away since it was spent so I don't accidentally put it back over there. So these will slide over. I will get my 10 information. The game doesn't get theirs because. So I will take 11 and put one back. Done. All right. So now, Hadid, let's see where she's going to go, shall we? Where is she going to put this? Hey, thank you, Viticulturist. It says, congrats on the best podcast ever. I assume you won it before. A shame if you had not. Well, very well deserved. We had not. Anyone who wins it is not uh, eligible for uh, uh, winning it. And some people disparage it and say it's a longevity contest. Eh, you know what? Um... What is it? The pros don't ask how? Is that what it is? Something like that. So, all right. Gonna go into social media. Okay. Interesting. All right. So, Gropius. But, no, I, I, it's been, what, six years? Next month? I appreciate that. All right. Gropius is going to go into networking. Okay. So let's walk through our options over here. If I put one into networking, I will get two bumps. And I keep a deed from going into it because of social, uh, social media, if I put one down here. I could get, whoa, I could get four bumps, couldn't I? Wow, we could get four bumps and Hadid would get one. If I went to broadcast with one of them and one of them into networking. For two and two, that might be worth it. For four bumps? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend uh, two bucks and two info to go one down here into broadcast. Then I'm going to take this one for free to go up there, which will give me a plus one. There. So now, here we go. We go top to bottom. Three, and whoever has the most gets another bonus, so that's going to be two bumps. And these three were used, so those will come back. This was not used for any bumps. It will stay there. This one doesn't have two, but one for the bonus, so that, and this will go on top there. Then, for every one, you get one bump, and then whoever has the most will get an additional bump. So that's gonna be two more bumps there, and this will come back. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That's better. All right. So now, we then go into the Ah, the marketing bonus. 
There's the problem. I don't have the cash. Damn it. But it was too, it was too good, too many bumps to not do that, I think. I think that still makes the most sense. Um, so what do we do for the bonus? We can't do the remodel, which means that Hadid's going to get it, unfortunately. So what do we do? Uh, we're short on, uh, m money's tight right now, so I would argue that money probably makes the most sense. A supply cube also does, because we have no supply cubes. But, what would we need supply cubes for? The only thing we need supply cubes for is to go into the factory, which probably not going to, because the depression and one or both of them are going to go to the factory. So I don't think that makes sense. It does, though. Well, no, because of the zero, it doesn't. But we have no money. We're about to get a bunch of money. But, yeah, I think we take the two bucks. I mean, it's two bucks. It's basically the two bucks I just paid for the broadcast to be able to get all those bumps in popularity. So I'm taking the money. That means Hadid there is going to take the remodel. And which one? It doesn't matter. She'll take the research and testing. There we go. Okay. I mean, the cube, the other thing that the cube does is it gives us two money and two information. I guess that does give us a little bit of flexibility as opposed to the two bucks. All right, you make a compelling argument. I'll buy that. I'll take the cube instead of the two bucks. There. All right, done. So this then comes off. That will go there. We'll just bring that over. We'll bring these over. Okay. All right. So now we go into the factory. Yeah. Oh, here we go again. Well, I'm going to get the nine. Oh, boy. But if it doesn't sell this round, it's literally a 50-50 shot. Either it sells for 12 or it doesn't, and then it might not sell at all. I can't. I have to go. I'm too risk adverse. I got to go for the eight. So then Gropius will go. I have to go for the eight. Um, the four bucks would be awesome, but I just, I can't run that risk. So Gropius is going to go to the high area. Well, all right. That, that. Here's the other, hold on. I did forget to take that into consideration as well. So hold on. I'm rushing a little bit on this. So I'm going to allow myself a little bit of a mulligan um, on this, and I'm going to shuffle that back in. So here's why. Before I make my decision, because the it's guaranteed three going to sell, and there are going to be four goods total, okay? If one of them places in the high area, because I'm highest on popularity, it guarantees that I sell there. So if you stop and think about it, it's a no-brainer that it should go to the 12. So I will do that, and I'm just going to shuffle these back in. And I'm going to let you guys choose which card gets picked for uh, Gropius. So pick a card, one, two, or three, going top to bottom. So yeah, that, that's a no-brainer. I should have... I'm trying to go a little too quick on that. So sorry about that. So pick a number, one, two, or three. My bad. And those odds, I would definitely do. So, plus, if it's four, then it's moot. So, mm. good point. Then this technically comes back there. Do I hear three? Well done, Kevin. <laughs> All right, three it is. So we're going to choose the bottom card. That was it. It is high. So, there we go. 
there, and she goes low. Wait. It is not guaranteed to sell, whereas now it is guaranteed to sell, so that makes sense. All right. So, economic forecasts. Here we go. Uh, I'm sorry. Check that. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, we do the stock exchange. This will come out. This will come out. Because we're in a boom, they will bump three. Uh, one. Everything bumps three. Sorry. One, two, three. One, two two, three, everything's going to liquidate. And because it's in a boom, it's times three. So that'd be nine bucks for me. I don't have to sell it now, but it's only going to get worse. So that will come back. And then these will clear off there. And now we will forecast. Here we go. It was four, there we go. So everything sells. So all that matters is I get 12 bucks out of it. So five. There we go. All right, everything sold, this goes away, all right. So now, black, choose a floor number, let's see, one through eight, guys. Pick a number, one through eight, first one to get two, and this will go to Hadid. I'm going to grab an office to put into her deck. There's her six. There is three here, that will stay. I'm just getting ready for next round while you guys figure that out. Um, so downsizing, no. Reset time markers, four, six, I should have 10. Four, three, and three. Done. Uh, stock the warehouse, go ahead and throw one out here. Adjust popularity, drop one, drop one. Assess the job market, it was zero, so the job market does not drop. And then forecast the economy. The boom is over. We are going into a depression and then immediately coming back into a boom. And we're going into round five, three rounds to go. So the first one, let's see, six it looks like. So let's see, six down. One, two, three, four, five, and six is the in-house factory for Hadid. And like I said, already gave her an Automa office. Finally. So, even playing this correctly, still only her first floor through the first four rounds. Interesting. All right. So, it's a new round, so going to shuffle up their decks. Yeah, 21 bucks and 11 information, but I have no money coming. It's going to be a depression, so only one good is going to sell at most. And I do have more information coming, so I'm pretty well balanced. I'm in pretty good shape, but I'm behind on floors, and I'm definitely going to want to buy, uh, definitely going to want to get into floors. So probably going to go to the construction company possibly twice this round. But if we do it twice, we got the round three things, which are end game multipliers, which those are real nice. So, and cut. All right. So new round. I'm going to get, th oh, forgot about that. Three and three, I'm gonna get six more bucks. So I'll take 11 and put a five back. So there's 27 bucks. All right, hire employees. Me first at three and three. Because I don't have the construction company, I don't know if I do. There is a boom coming up, though. Hmm. Which means having more... Uh. I 
I think we will. Three and three. I'm gonna set one aside. We will hire one more. So because we hired at three and three, nobody else is hiring, so we're done with hiring. Schedule business. It's going to be going right to left. All right. So first things first. Hold on one second, where's the one that I'm looking for? Right there, the assembly line. With that, I, that's the one I'm leaning towards getting with the uh, boom coming up next round. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so the construction company, I paid the four and the four. So done. I think that makes the most sense without overthinking it. So then Hadid. Construction company. Gropius, office, stalling, okay? So back to me. Did I pay the four and four? I did, didn't I? Right? Just somebody verify, yes, I did do the four and four there. Um... You know what? I'm looking at the stock exchange and going to the one and one. Okay, I did. Cool. Thank you. Oh, I did not. So what did I... Ah, I paid for the hire. Thank you. All right, cool. So... Four bucks and four info. Thank you. All right. That's why I was waiting. Um, so we are a little tight on info right now, but that's, that's about to change. If I can wait to get... I want the second spot in a perfect world here. I'm actually thinking about doing that because for the boom, that's going to be worth $9 for one and one. I think it's going to be worth $9. So I, uh, as long as I'm not second or as long as I'm not third there, I think I can wait one turn. Next turn, if I don't do it now, I have to go there. So now the question is, where do we go? Hmm, where do we go? What about going to the construction company a second time? Hmm. Because it's going to be, I'm going to need six and six, which I will have. And then it would be 16, no, six, eight, 18 and 18. I, if I take the two bucks, I won't have the info. So I can't do, I can't get two floors, but I could get, 
the tenant improvement, which means I don't drop in popularity. I can do the free actions to re do an office remodel. You know what? I think I will for the first time is I will do the three dollars and three info to do an office remodel. So there's seven back. And then two info. So which of the three office remodels? make the most sense, which I think, honestly, if I do the assembly, I don't need that floor then, which then I can use that floor to be able to get information, the new floor. So looking at this, I could get the IT department, which gives me th four info. Um, or because I'm going to have so many markers, that would give me 10 info right there. Take care, Tim. Thanks for hanging out. So I think actually I do that. I think I'm going to do the assembly room. So I'm going to do that. And I still haven't taken my action for this turn. And that action is going to be the one and one to do that. Because that's going to generate us the money we need there at the uh, stock exchange. So now it's Hadid's turn, which goes to the consulting firm. That worked out. And Gropius does the advertising agency. So now I will spend the five bucks to come over to the consulting firm and Hadid will go to the factory, Gropius will go to the stock exchange, which is what I needed. And now it's back to me. I have four time markers. I don't know what I'm going to use yet. Hey, Oliver. Well, so I don't forget, and I don't mind stalling a little bit, I'm going to use two of the time markers here at the assembly to be able to get a cube. And that sets me up for next turn so that now I'm ready to go to the factory twice because of the boom. So now Hadid goes, goes to the warehouse. I didn't want to spend the money or the information to do that. I was willing to spend two time instead. And then Gropius, another Automa office, done. Back to me. We have four time. Well, if we're going to go to the factory twice and possibly the construction company, I got a bunch of things here. So I need six and six to be able to build one more floor. I'm seriously tempted to go back here But if I'm going to get the info, I don't need to go there twice. Ah. 
Dimitri makes a fair point. All right. I will go to the research and testing and I will sell a, a cube with one time marker to get two and two. And now Hadid goes, Automa office, there. Back to me because Gropius is done. Now I will spend two more time to go ahead and generate another cube. So I'm just gonna put this here and take that off. Yeah, there, we'll leave it there. Um, done, and now back to Hadid, who will go to the stock exchange. Well, that, that will go to that spot. So I have one marker left. Well, hold on. I will train with that one. That one will come off now. And now I have one, time, one marker left. So if I were to spend the time to put it there, it will go there, it won't move, and then the boom, it will go probably one, two, and then one, two, three. That could be nine more dollars for one info. Fair point, I will do that. I will spend the one info and I will go there with the boom coming up. I think that makes sense. Wow, this game is playing out so uniquely, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think you guys are totally spot on. All right, we are done scheduling. So here, I will get my 10 info. Then uh, Gropius will flip and see where he's going, going to social media, as you guys can see there. So he'll drop, oh, interesting. Doesn't have three, but gets the bonus. Doesn't have two, but gets the bonus. So it's going to go up two. Oh, look at this. One, two. And those will both come back. Well, that worked out really, really well. So now I'm first. I will take the free remodel. Well, not free, but you get the idea. And the other, and then technically Gropius is next. So I will spend the one and one. And I'll go ahead and take the meeting room, which is going to potentially give me more information. Okay. So it doesn't matter what they choose because it wasn't that. This will come off. And now, not guaranteed to sell, so Hadid's will go to the high area. There. So then, one, two, three, four, there, there, and there. But it will not bump because it's in a depression, so those will just stay there and nobody's going to liquidate because it's multiplied times zero. So then we go to the economic forecast, and in a perfect world, it's one. I hope this sells, honestly. It's sold. So one and three, respectively. The reason that matters is this is going to come off and then that clears that up for this. That worked out. All right. So now construction company. I owe six and six to be able to build a floor because it's my third floor. So, uh, oh wait, one, two, three. Yeah, six and six. All right, so there's six and 11. And I think we're going to get the, f uh, we need money, don't we? But we're, going, we're not getting anything there. We're getting three bucks there. 
We're going to get a bunch of money here plus there for next turn, but I got to have the money to be able to get into next turn. Hmm. Because in a perfect world, I want to be able to build three of those, and that might be a bit ambitious. Oh. The online store would generate six bucks. And I have a cube creating action now. Oh, I don't know what I, oh, I don't know. Those are all of my action, all of my options. The construction company would save me potentially 12 and 12 if I get there three times. So that would save me 12 money and 12 information between now and the end of the game. Uh, the online store, because I only have six bucks and I'm not making any money between now and the end of conduct or until conduct business next round. And I'm going to need at least, at least four. So it really, oof. the online store is tempting. I don't have a ton of information but I can always generate information with time markers. Or the three and three. So I think we either go there, there, or there. I think I've narrowed it down to those three. The four, the four uh, tie or the four info gives me the info that I need for scheduling business. So I'm done to be able to do that twice. But I am so hella short on. I actually, you know what? I'm doing the construction admin at this point. I think now it makes sense to do that. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Because it'll be free to place there. I have the money to go there and I just need them to back that up. Let's see if it works out. Oh, there you go. All right. So I have taken that, and now Black, indeed, will get another Automa office, and we'll get another one. So now choose a number one to six, guys. There we go, shuffled. Whew. So that will come here. Two more markers for Hadid. Four there. Good. So I should have three, six, nine, ten, thirteen. Six, seven, eight. Eight and five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, looks like six it is. So six is the bottom one, which is the assembly line. Okay, I already added the Automa office. I need to shuffle both of those, but I'll do that in a minute. Downsize. I'm not. 
Reset time marker is done. Stock the warehouse. One goes there. Adjust popularity. They drop collectively, and then I drop one. Assess the job market. It is three because of the depression. That will bottom out. And then forecast the economy. Depression goes away. There's a boom. And we will go into a recession for the last round. So a new round. So round six, the level threes come out. And each of them get a construction company added to both of their decks as well. The twos are still available, but realistically, nobody's going to buy them. The automos will not, and I probably will not. We are in the penultimate round, and I will shuffle these. You guys enjoying this? Having a good time? I am. It's tense. I feel like I'm being competitive. I appreciate the assistance, peanut gallery. Chad, how's my pulled pork doing? Not gonna show, uh, he will cut. Okay. And will not cut this round. All right, receive income. I get zero money but three bucks for that. Okay, hire employees. I am not. Three and three, or at two and two. Grofius will add an extra factory card to his deck and never hire again. So these three markers are now coming in for Gropius. This actually immediately gets shuffled in there. Good, glad you guys are uh, enjoying this, good. All right, he, oops, he will cut. All right, so Gropius' special ability is done, so nobody's hiring anymore. I'm not going to. Uh, so technically, because he hired, that will move up to there. And now we're in the schedule business, and we're going clockwise starting or right or going left to right starting with me okay so let's prioritize construction admin in factory construction admin so i'm going to use three of my markers to go here which now means i get to place one there without having to pay the four and the four that works so gropius goes to the factory Hadid goes to the factory. I'm not surprised. Okay. So now here's the question. Can I afford to do it twice in the construction company? I think I'm going to be able to. There's three. And that'll go there. Do want to point out, in the three-player game, only the top four spots are available. These are only available in the four-player. So those are blocked off. Gropius. Automa Office. Whoop. Hadid. Stock Exchange. Thank you very much. Needed that. Back to me. Now we will do the factory. Two, two, and a cube. So two two, and a cube, and that will go there, selling three or four, okay? Take care, uh, Oliver. Uh, that was me. Back to Gropius. Construction company. Hadid. Automa office. Thank you. Back to me. Well... Stay on target. Two. Two.
two and a cube. Goes to the factory. Warehouse. Hadid. Consulting firm. One down, one to go. Back to me. I need information. So, I will go two here to generate a cube. Gropius, come on, consulting firm, advertising agency. Hadid, Automa Office. Back to me. I will then go one there. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. This and this, which will get me for information. Come on, Gropius, two shots left. Stock exchange, stop that. I mean, it's helpful for money, but stop that. Hadid's last action, construction company. That's booked up. Now it's me, now we have a decision to make. With those four out there, I think I'm going to have a plethora of money. The question is, will I have enough information? This is going to be the fourth floor. So it's going to be... Having a hard time keeping it straight in my head. It's going to be 18 and 18. I will have 15. Ha! Ah. How perfect did this work out? There's a 25% chance that Gropius goes to the consulting firm. I really need him to go to the consulting firm because I want to take these two markers to be able to go here to give me three, which would give me 18, assuming he goes there. But I can't take that risk. So, I can, one of these will have to go there to the meeting room to be completely safe. And then I can take the two info there if I go there. But I would prefer him to go there. But if I go, then I have a chance to be able to get it to get a third floor for next round. I'll spend the five bucks. To go there. So now Gropius goes to the factory. There we go. So I have 10, 15 information, and a ton of money. I can get two information here. So what do I do with this? That guarantees that I can build two floors. And provided he doesn't go to broadcast, I will stay first and uh, yeah, I think I have to. So I will go there to get one information. It's not ideal, I understand, but it guarantees it. It locks it up. Um, yeah, I think I have to do that. All right, so we're done scheduling. I get my 10 info. So networking for Gropius. Goes the broadcast. Interesting, though, isn't it? All right, so that'll go there. So he's going to get two bumps for advertising. Hmm. So he's going to remodel, which actually really isn't too bad, and I will take the two info. And which remodel? He'll go and get the assembly. Doesn't matter. 
this comes off. Ha! Huh. Here we go. Oh, forgot to move that up. There we go. All right. So let's see. Gropius first for retail, three or four. So one of those for sure is not going to sell. That's going to be into the low bucket. Then Hadid. is going to go into the high bucket, okay? That'll go there for sure. And then the other one. So let's see, if it goes here, that sells for sure. And then if there's a fourth, that would go here. If it's here, it would sell for sure there, but wouldn't sell if it's, oh. I feel like this is a, an obvious puzzle that I'm struggling to figure out. Okay, if the blue one ends up down here, there are three that would sell, three or four. So blue's here, then I should place there, because that will get uh, if four. And if there's three and I place it down here, then it's not going to sell and it liquidates. If he goes here and I'm here, still need four to sell, so that doesn't change anything. And if it were here, it would change, so we're going to go there. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I got there eventually. All right. <laughs> All right, Grofius, here we go. I am hoping that he goes low. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Goes high. All right. So stock market. So this comes out. So these are going to go up to one, two to make room for these. And then three. One, two, three falls off. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I nailed that, didn't I? All right, so everything's going to sell because it's a boom. And it's times three, so that's going to be 3 times 4 and 3 times 3, so that's 12 and 9 for 21 bucks. Nailed it. Here we go. That'll do, pig. So even if it doesn't sell, I'm okay. That works out. All right. I really would like 4, though. Like, I'm going to use my one time right now for this to be a four on the on that. Okay. So here we go. Come on, four. Three. Boo. One time didn't work. Didn't work when I was in the WSOP and I got eliminated 221st. Didn't work then either. All right. So three are going to sell. So this and this for sure. So I'm getting eight bucks for that. So a moment, I will take my eight bucks. Okay, then the third one to sell is from this bucket. The most popular is going to be blue, so that will sell. So that is four down there, and that's all his markers done. Okay, these do not sell, so they can drop to those. Done. All right. So... I have to buy my fourth and fifth floor, so that's 18 and 18, because I'm the first two. So there's 18 and 18. That'll do. All 
So what two floors do we want? Let's take a look at these, shall we? And those will come off. And so I don't forget, this will come because each of them are going to buy a floor as well. So I added the Automa offices for each of them. Okay? Plus one for replacements. Oh. <laughs> All right. So let's look. Two per achievement floor, meaning these. So that, that means this would be worth nine points. That's not bad. Okay? So that's nine points. That's worth eight. Well, nine's bigger than eight. Okay. Uh, that's eight as well. So, okay. Uh, two per popularity level. Now, I do want to point this out. There are three buckets, if you will, of level. I'm going to regress one. So right now, that when that drops, that'll be worth seven points. Could be worth nine. Can't get to 11, I don't think. So that's going to be worth probably nine points for that one. Okay, but possibly. One per employee. One, two, three, four. That's worth 10, provided I don't downsize. Okay, so 10 is better than nine. That could be worth 11 if I get one more though. So I would argue that if I can get to the third bucket, that's worth 11 points. So okay, all those are in the running. Three per cube. So if I have two cubes there at the end, that's worth 11 points. That might could happen too. Oops. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. One per remodeled room. I have five. That guaranteed is worth five points. So that's 11 for sure. So this is 100%. And it's two to be able to make it worth 12 points. I'm sorry. Check that. It's six points. That's actually only worth eight. Never mind. We're not getting that one. Matt, I, reading comprehension. Uh, one per remodeled room. So this one is worth 10 right now. Possibly worth 11. Okay. Not going to do that one because I only have one remodel left to do. And one per uh, floor improvement. which are tenant improvements, I believe. Makes them worth four points a piece. I'm not gonna do that one either. All right, so which two of these do we want? Well, this is worth 10 right now, going to be worth 10. That is worth 10 right now, could be worth 11. So I would argue that should definitely be it. Three per, it's worth five, eight, or 11. I could make sure that that's worth 11, and we're going into a recession. So that just requires me to use four time markers to do so for six points. That seems really good. Two per popularity level. That requires some work, and I don't know if I'm going to do that, so no. And two per achievement floor. It requires work, but I certainly hope to get another floor. But I don't know that I will. This I know I can do. So I'm going to get those two floors. All right. Drop that down a little bit. Ugh. Come on. Trying to get, well, you know what? You guys have seen the game at this point. I think I can zoom out a hair. There we go. To drop this down. There we go. All right, so that said, from the current floors, pick a number one through eight, okay? In fact, pick two numbers, one through eight, because they're both gonna build a floor. And I've already added their Automa offices. So I will take these out. And blue will get the first number chosen. That's six. That's seven done. All 
All right, three, so there we go, one, two, three. Two per popularity level, so that's gonna be worth 11 points for Gropius. Okay, and let's see, the second number is gonna be, looks like five. So, one, two, three, four, five, right there. Okay. Hadid got the office remodel, which is a crappy floor for her. Okay. All right, so now, downsize. I'm not. Reset the time markers, okay? So I should have, let me, seven, 10, 13. So that's four for there, three for there, and three for there. So that goes away. Six and seven, done. Uh, stock the warehouse, one cube, which won't, well, it might matter because of the one for the supply chest. Uh, adjust popularity, that will drop, those will drop to the first bucket. Assess the job market, it drops one, but it doesn't matter. And then forecast the economy, going into a recession. And we'll stay in a recession for the final round. All right, so I need to shuffle every day. Every damn shuffle. And we will cut for both of them. It's tense. I'm winning right now, but that could change. So, because for every time they go to the construction uh, area in the last two rounds, they will, uh, they will build two floors, uh, or they'll build a floor each time. So it's possible they each get two. So, and I said we would cut. All right, so the order is counterclockwise or right to left, starting with Gropius and going that way. So we have no info. We need 12 info. We can do that. Oh yeah, we got this. We're gonna be able to build, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this will be our sixth floor, just because this is hard for me to track. Yeah, 12 and 12. Oh, we got this. All right, Gropius, uh, let's see. Receive income. Nothing but I get three bucks. Okay, done. Hire, no one's hiring. Schedule, Gropius is up first. Z Warehouse, which is good if you have that, but otherwise wasted. So my turn. One, two, three. There we go. Hadid, C consulting firm. That's good. Get that out of the way first. Advertising agency. I have no idea what I'm doing at this point. Okay. Two there for a cube. So I'm second, so here we go, Hadid, construction company, Gropius, factory, a cube, Hadid, stock exchange, Gropius, construction company. Mm 
back to me. I need 12 info. So there's 12 bucks. I know probably I can get the two money. In fact, what's the order for that? It is remodel, temp, supply, money, yes. So as long as I'm second, I will get the two bucks there. Or the info, whichever it is I need, right? Hey, Tony. Because I would like Gropius to go there and not have to waste the five bucks. That's, that's, there's the rub, right? Um, and it, I mean, this is $3 no matter what, right? So I actually only need nine up here. So hold on, let me make change. So I need nine up there. So if that's the case, that all but guarantees me I have the five bucks left over to go there. But, I mean, I would love to be able to not have to waste that for here to be able to get the remodel for the one on one, right? Let me see. If I went there, that's four info. Mm -hmm. I have six markers. Oh, wait a minute. Thirteen and do I get greedy? I'm going to get greedy. And it keeps them from getting floors. So that's a net win. Even if I only, even, hell, even if I don't build. It keeps them from being able to do so. Ha, 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 ha. Automa office. Done. Automa office. Stop that. So now... That's one info. Yep, we're going to do these one at a time because I'm stalling. Hadid, go to the warehouse. Gropius, come on. Factory, stop that. One info. Hadid, Automa, here we go. Come on, Gropius, do your job. Get to the consulting firm. Construction company. Note, it's full. So you draw another card per uh, David Short in the BGG forums. So, wrong C. We need another consulting firm. Automa office. Perfect. Nailed it. Glory to Rome, dude. I mean, realistically, he shouldn't go there, right? Now I have to spend the five bucks. It was worth the risk. It was worth the, the attempt to do it. So we are done. These push. And by the way, these don't matter, so I'm just going to take them off. And going to get my 10 info. And thankfully, this worked out. 
So it doesn't matter where he goes. He's going to go into networking, so he's just going to get one bump. He's going to get the office remodel. I have 12. I need 13 in a perfect world. So I need 13, I said. I have 12. So if I get the two info, this is definitely going to be worth $3. And in fact, that will never sell. It could sell. It could sell. So I'm guaranteed to be able to get the floor. I might be able to get the tenant improvement as well. If I get the two info, I will take the two info. There. These are not guaranteed to sell, so we need to draw for them. As long as one of them is high, I have a chance. Low, of course, and low. Damn it! So I have no chance to sell now. This will go. That doesn't matter. That's going to come off. And it's two. If one of those had been high, I would have sold. Damn it. So these sell. That liquidates and that liquidates. So I get three bucks. Ah! All right. I'll get a floor for 12 and 12. That should have gone away. So I have one left. Ah! It wasn't greedy. It was smart, but didn't work out. Hey, Renee. All right. One per floor improvement. No. Eight points. Eight points. Two per achievement floor. Uh, that'll be four of those. Um, I'll choose that one. There we go. And then black and then blue each get one. So choose a number one through five, then choose a number one through four. And they each will get one more floor. Hey, Renee, thanks. No, sorry. <laughs> All right, five for the first one, which is going to go to black. And then four for the second one, which is going to go to blue. There we go. So, uh, Hadid, one per floor improvement and one per employee. But all of these are as if they're maxed. All right. So that's the end. And this one, I cannot because I'm short, so I just lose it. So that just comes back. All right. Let's go into scoring. All right. Game ends. Da, 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 da. Add up your remodel rooms, your tenant improvements, your floors, achievement floors, da, 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 da. Okay. Now, I do have a thing here from David because I did this wrong on the last stream as well. Official breakdown of how Automa score achievement floors, not including the, the floor's default victory points. All right. So we will go ahead and start here with Gropius. And I will get a pen. Just going to set that there. And a piece of paper. I don't want to use those. A moment. There we go. 
literally scratch paper. All right, so Gropius, Hadid, and Edward. All right, so here we go. Gropius, he's going to have four points here on his ground floor there. He's going to have five for that floor. Then another five, five, and six for a total of 16. Then we have marketing and retention. Retention scores five more and marketing scores six more, so that's 11. So uh, by my math, 10, 16. I'm counting 36 total for Gropius here. So retention is worth an extra five, so that's 11. Marketing is worth another six, that's 11, that's 22. 22 and 10 is 32, 34, 36 points. 36 leader in the clubhouse, okay? Hey, David. I feel a lot more confident about this one, all right? All right. All right, so, hold on, Hadid now. Bring this over. Hold on. There we go. All right. So Hadid, we're looking at three, six, and ten there. Then the skyline achievement is going to be seven more, so that's going to be a total of twelve for that floor. The office renovation is six points. Six, and then 10 for those, three and 10, right. So we're looking at uh, 38 leader in the clubhouse. So 10 and 12 is 22, no, sorry, let's try this again. 12 and six is 18, 28, 38. There we go. Good. All right. So now, yours truly. I like my chances on this one. All right. Let's clear all this clutter off of here. All right. We're looking at two, four, six, eight, ten, sort of. But let's go here. Achievement floors. So. One, two, three. So at six, that's going to be 11 points for this floor. Production. Three per cube. I have two cubes, so that's going to be 11 for that floor. One per remodeled room. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to be 11 for that floor. Another 10. And another 10. I smoked them. Looking at 53. 53. 33. 38. 36. Redemption. One. In the books. What? Mm. And played it right. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was, that was excellent. Well done, David. Seriously, the improvements on this version of the game is just universally the, yeah, across the board, just great. So really well done. And the Automa couldn't be easier to run. You saw me. Flip a card, do a thing. Flip a card, do a thing. Flip a card, do a thing. Super, super easy. Cannot say enough good things. Um, I loved it at one player. Uh, and by one, I mean, really, it's kind of three players, right? Uh, so three or four players, either one with two bots or with two humans and a bot or three humans. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, good stuff. Um, just really excellent all the way across the board. Uh, can't say enough good things about the game. It's one of my top 50, if not higher. It's definitely in there somewhere. And I just think it... Elegant? I mean, because all the, all the hard things are up in here, right? It's not how to play the game. It's really relatively simple. I would argue it's probably more than relatively simple. It's really simple to play, especially if you're used to the games that we enjoy playing. And yeah, just not enough good things to say about this game. I love this game. I, I, I really think this was, yeah, it's excellent. Uh, I'm just checking to see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. It's been a few hours since I looked at my phone, sorry. Um, nope. Good deal. Uh, yeah. Two, two glory to Rome's. And uh, those who bet on me for redemption. One for one of three this week. So yeah, ground floor second edition. I'll be honest. The only real difference between the... Well, okay, there, there's a handful of differences. Let's be clear. But the stock exchange doesn't exist in the first edition. Uh, it plays five players, which may or... This version plays five, that version plays six. Don't play it at six. Uh, yeah, three, four, and five, I like this game. I, I, I haven't played it too, so I can't speak to it. I'm not saying I don't like it, I just, I don't know. And yeah, um, yeah, I, I just think if you can get a copy of this, if you saw it, I think it nails what it tries to do, and I love this game. I think it's fantastic. And you could always, if you want a bigger challenge, I don't see a reason, and, and David's in chat, he can tell me otherwise, I don't see a reason why you couldn't play with two Hadids, just one named Pei or one named Gropius. I think that would work if you want a bigger challenge. I think that works. Um, yeah, so well done. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. That was a blast. That was... Uh, two player with Automa is fine, Dimitri says. Okay, cool. Um, good deal. Uh, David, um, and I asked this last week, but I'm probably going to take that, that uh, stream down uh, and make it unlisted. So let me ask this here, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but is there discussion? Where are things on a possible reprint? Um, and I'll wait the 20 seconds or so, well, plus another 10 seconds for you to type. Um, so let, me, let, let folks know. Uh, since I'm going, I'm, I, I don't know how its availability is. I assume it's out of print because it's Spielworks and it's a thousand copies. But uh, I honestly, I don't know who you're talking to, but I think Capstone, this fits really, really well with them. Um, okay, and David says, I think it will work too with two Hadids. Never tried it though. So yeah, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. Um, yeah, so... Hadid got a little bit lost on doing too many things. She had her head down too much and not enough in the construction company, I think. Uh, too many Automa offices. Um, yeah, so good, good stuff. Uh, we're trying. Conversations are happening. Nothing concrete yet. All right. Well, hey, David, if there's anything I can do to help with that, uh, to talk to somebody, point them to the stream. You see people asking for it. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, if there's anything I can do, let me know. I'm happy to do so because I think it's a fantastic game. And it deserves to be uh, to a wider audience. And I think there's a lot of people out there that would really enjoy this game. So the theme might appeal. I mean, you're, you're an entrepreneur. You're a CEO, right? And the fact that the floors physically build up and you see your board getting bigger. People like building stuff and seeing what they do. I think there's a lot of, re a lot of things going for this. And... Yeah, just really well done. I love this, and I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. So if you can find a copy secondhand, do so. Leave comments down below. If you're watching this after the, after the fact, leave comments, because David can always be like, look, publishers, people want this game. Go post in the forums on BGG uh, that you saw the stream, and you are definitely in, uh, interested in supporting a reprint, that type thing. 
If you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumb down below, subscribe down below as well. Hit the little bell notification so you get notified whenever I go live. And if you were entertained or you got turned on to or off to a game and it helped save you money or made you spend money, I'm going to ask you to spend a couple more bucks a month. Support the show over on PledgeHC.com. I certainly would appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. That was a lot of fun. I will be back 20 hours or so tomorrow with the hunters. I even have a color-coordinated outfit to be a captain lieutenant for a U-boat tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. All right, yeah, good stuff. Oh, David pointed something out that probably should be pointed out. Uh, yeah, there, the Automas are only in the second edition. Forgot about that. So that's that's a huge deal to some people. So there you go. Uh, oh, last thing I will say before I bug out of here. While you're waiting for a reprint, if you are impatient, look on BGG on the secondhand market. Find people that have it listed for trade and make them offers. And anybody that has it rated lowly, I don't know what they were thinking, um, but still show it as owned. Maybe make them an offer as well. Find that in their collection and go that way on BGG. That's just another way to help you guys get a copy. That was good stuff. I really had a blast today. I'm going to go eat some, uh, hopefully, some barbecue. Chad, I'm just saying. Hopefully, I have some pulled pork downstairs. I'm kidding. He didn't bring me pulled pork. He should have, but I would like that. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Hunters. Take care. Be kind to one another. Continue practicing your social distancing. Wear your masks. And thank you again, Jess, for the haircut, because, God, did I need that. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Edward 1, bots 0 on Redemption Week. <laughs> oh, yeah. One down, two to go. I will make, I am going to kick some serious, serious bot this week. <laughs>